What's up, what's up, everybody? Chris Record here with Carl the Shark Shookert. And today we are in the 90 Day Challenge group here, and we are going to talk about Shopify blogging. Shopify blogging is a completely different strategy than most people are using. What we're going to do is we are going to discuss, um, number one, most people do not use their Shopify blog. Carl came across this and started doing some research. Shopify realized most people aren't even using their blog that comes with their store. Because most people say, well, why would I want the blog? I want to focus on sales. What if that blog could actually make you sales? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to discuss some of the high level stuff with the blog. Introduce you to the shark. You guys got to meet the shark. Carl's awesome. He's always wearing shark gear. I don't know if you could tell, but it's a shark shirt. He's always rocking the shark shirts. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to switch over and share my screen. And we're going to show you how to be able to reverse engineer other Shopify blogs and how to be able to model after what they're doing to be able to make sales. So today is going to be extremely effective. And this is here from the Techademic Studio in North Scottsdale, Arizona. Meanwhile, next door, we're actually running a live event with hundreds of entrepreneurs on stage at a Tech Week conference. So we're just having a blast. Uh, immediately following this, I'm going to jump back on stage and be sharing there. But we wanted to spend some time here with you today. So let's kick this thing off uh, with Carl and his Techademics Cup. And let's do this. Let's spend maybe a couple minutes real quick. And I want to introduce you all to Carl Shooker. Before we dive into this training, who is Carl? We've had a chance to work together for a little while. So why don't you introduce him? Um, who are you? Uh, how did you get involved in this industry? What have you been up to? How do we know each other? Why don't you give him like a two to five minute breakdown? Sure, absolutely. Well, first off, thanks for uh, allowing me to be on your show here. 90 Day Challenge, what an amazing concept. A lot of people are already getting tons and tons of results out. I'm seeing them being posted everywhere. So congratulations on that. And for the people that are actually taking action and actually applying some of these principles and making them happen, it's truly amazing. This guy is a phenomenal person. And just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a, a rundown of my relationship with Chris and kind of how I got started in this industry, back in uh, 2013 is actually when I decided I made a mental decision to go full-time internet marketing. And I'd already been studying, I'd already been following the Chris Records, the Russell Brunsons, the Mike Phil Sames, the Andy Jenkins. I was already following the Frank Kearns out there. And I was already starting to digest this information at that, at that point. And I came from a corporate background where I used to actually teach insurance agents uh, how to sell insurance, one-on-one, -on -one, belly to belly, which is actually, it's, it's similar, but it is different than marketing. And so I had to actually figure out what those two, two things are, those two variables were. And that's where I came from. That was my initial step into the, into the IM space. I uh, created a product, I actually met with a, a very well-known marketer and, and I didn't know, I was kind of feeling lost. I was like, what should I do, what should I do? And e-commerce really hadn't started to explode yet at that mm -hmm. point. So I was like, what, what should I do to uh, get started? How can I get my feet wet? And he said, Carl, what do you know? What do you know? What, do you, what can you do best? Like, what could you teach the best? And I was like terribly bored with it. I was terribly bored with the insurance industry, unfortunately. But I, I was a wealth of information and I wanted to get it out there. So the first thing I ever did is I created an online uh, marketing system for insurance agents uh, that were stuck or feeling lost and that uh, gave them a system to they, that, you know, systematize their business, including giving them a sales presentation and all this stuff where they could actually go in person and start selling leads, all kinds of stuff, built a system. And it was crazy. Me and my, my wife, Ikumi, we actually filmed it in-house. We built a green screen up. We built a kind of like a nice little uh, studio in our house. And we just started presenting it and she was pregnant a lot of people don't even know it but she was pregnant during the time and she had like the belly but we were filming her from here on up <laughs> so my my wife akumi she's she's an awesome lady she's an entrepreneur she's like us you know she's like us she she thinks like us and she's and she's like that entrepreneurial spirit so she actually went in and she helped us and and we did this like whole funnel we built a funnel online and uh our and we had a very small list like a thousand people we were one of the first uh, insurance brokerages to start um, using SEO tactics, which I will talk a little bit later on. Uh, to you know, with our actual brokerage, we're using these tech these tactics back in the day to uh, help rank our brokerage, and we actually had a very small insurance agents list. And so from there, we were teaching them. You know, we were bringing them over and starting to actually monetize them by giving them an access to a training that we built online. So that was the first product. And uh, it was, and, you know, there's a lot of lessons that came out of it. I, mm -hmm. I feel like everybody should create, should treat, treat like a, an uh, e-commerce like a launch 
And uh, every time you're launching a new product, it's like a learning lesson that you're going to come and you're going to get out of that. So we created that that first product, that initial product, and it did like six thousand dollars with a thousand person list immediately. But some of the problems that we ran into was one of them is I didn't I didn't know how much traffic we were going to get when we launched it. We crashed the site, <laughs> so the site actually crashed itself. And then uh, on top of that, we uh, we birthed our child the day wow. that we launched. The day you launched. The day we launched. Your launch was on the birthday. <laughs> the, the launch was on the birth date of my daughter, and we had complications with uh, with the Jeez. unfortunately with the. Uh, um, the pregnancy and stuff, but everything's good. Everything's all right. Um, but we were we were stuck in that situation where I was like, you know what, I can't deal with the business right now. Even though this whole thing launched and it was taking off, I couldn't really deal with it. So I had to actually email everybody else and try to bring them back on. But that was my first product. They gave me like my got my feet wet and got me started immediately into the online internet marketing space. And then from there. I went to a JV Zoo event. I'm really big about talking about going to events and finding mentors and going to events because you, you get around these like-minded people that are all buzzing and you don't get that at home typically. Like my mm-hmm. home environment was not, not necessarily always super positive and kept, it, it actually would be positive because I had a way of like flipping everything and making it and turning it into a positive. But most people are, are they get stuck in their, their like broken situation where it's constantly going over and over and over again. And, uh, and so from there, I went to the JV Zoo event. Chris didn't know me. I didn't know him. Uh, hung out and uh, watched Chris do a little rap with uh, Flavor Flav up on stage <laughs> with some freestyle. He was he was hammering out pretty good. And then uh, right after that, I was like, because I'd already started seeing Chris. Chris was already starting to capitalize on Facebook marketing because Facebook marketing was so new to everybody at that point. And uh, he was already still getting in everybody's minds and their faces, right, and really sticking out. And so I, I did some geographical searches. I was looking at like Russell Brunson up in uh, Boise, and then I saw I came across Chris. And at that time, he was living in uh, living in Sacramento, right outside of Sacramento in Roseville. And that was like literally like an hour and a half, two hours from me. So at that point, I was like, how can I crack into Chris's office? How can I hack in? And I, I did. I, I successfully made it happen. I got on Facebook of all the places. He was a Facebook guy, so you know he was probably on Facebook. I started messaging him, and what do you know? Chris actually started responding to me, and then you know those sales skills pulled in. I started asking him, like, what did he need? How could I help him out? And I went into his office, and I started working for free. So I actually, I was like, hey, I'll do, I'll do whatever you need. Let me come in, just introduce myself, see what your organization, how it looks, and then see if there's anything I can help you with. And Chris, so Chris goes, yeah, come on in. If it doesn't work, we'll know right away, but at least come on in, let's see what you can do. And so I came in, I showed him I knew a little bit about Facebook ads, knew a little bit about SEO, knew a little bit about uh, WordPress, and then was, you know, already wanted to be into e at that point. Like, that was something that I've been wanting to do for a long time on the catalog side. And I knew that there would be a big opportunity there as well in the future. And so from there, we came up with the shark. Hmm. Uh, me and Chris became friends, befriended Chris, even got stayed the night at his house a few times. And uh, just became good friends and then just started helping out with launches. We launched... Uh, millions of dollars in products together and he mentored me helped me out along the way and was like a like a huge blessing in my life and uh, and also I felt like I also created some value for him as well inside of his business and so that's kind of how we got started that's how the that's how the whole thing got rolling at that point and you know what I like about this story is that if you're paying attention there's a lot of lessons you can learn just from his story alone which is he basically valued mentorship so much. Carl actually came and worked for my company for free for a year. And he would work about two, sometimes three days per week. And it was like, how long did you have to drive each way to get to the office? Yeah, it was a good uh, almost two-hour drive. Two hours. <laughs> he would drive two hours, work out of the office, stay overnight, sometimes stay a couple of nights, and work out of the office with us. And he never asked for any money because he knew that if he – was involved, it was like an intrapreneurship. He was an entrepreneur, wanted to work internally inside of a fast growing company that was relevant at the time. We weren't some large company with thousands of employees, but we were relevant. We were teaching strategies that were cutting edge that you know was the industry he wanted to be in. From that, Carl ended up making great connections. Carl was part of my mastermind, helped not only as a student, but helped run it and helped organize it. Carl was the JV manager on my product launches, helped us launch millions of dollars in products. So he got immediate immersion into millions of dollars in revenue and being able to watch how it was generated and be able to see the downsides of business, which a lot of people don't talk about, but there's always struggles as well. From that, 
Carl went on and really got involved in e-commerce. We went on and I moved to Arizona, start a new company. Carl launched his own e-commerce business as well with his wife and they've done very, very well in e-commerce, not only on the, the, the products and building stores, but really where Carl has made his name is developing software, um, launching products that have to do with e-commerce and really kind of finding what are things you can do with your Shopify store that other people aren't doing? Which brings us to today's topic, which is when I was interviewing Carl earlier, Carl's like, hey, you know what we've been working a lot with is Shopify blogs. I said, Shopify blogs? Barely anybody's even using their Shopify blog. He goes, yeah, basically nobody's using their Shopify blog. So what we want to do is we want to spend, it doesn't have to be long. We want to spend, because we're running a conference, but maybe like at least 20 minutes with you right now. I wanted to introduce you to Carl. And I want to talk about Shopify blogging and why everybody should consider using their blog on your Shopify account. So I'll kick this thing off. I'll pass it to Carl. We'll talk a little bit, uh, maybe 10 minutes about it. And then we'll go and I'll actually show you how to go online and how to search and find other Shopify stores that are successfully using blogs. You guys are going to love today's nugget. It's going to be a blast. So with that being said, let's dive right into it. Yeah. So why Shopify blogging? Okay. I'll kick off a few obvious ones. Number one, your Shopify store, it already comes with a blog for free. So first things first, there's no additional fee for you to have your own blog. So if there's no additional fee, if there's no additional cost, it's just a time issue, why not at least give it a shot? There's no real harm, there's no real risk, you're not paying extra money, you're not, uh, you know, there's nothing really too crazy about it, you literally could just go onto your blog and write posts. So as long as there's value in it, why not do it? So number one, it's free, it's already included, and it's pretty simple. Number two, there's no coding needed. You don't need to install anything fancy. You don't need any coding. There's nothing you really have to do. It's very, very simple. You literally just go into your admin area and click write a new post. Okay, number three, you can do things on your blog that you can't do on your product pages. So on your product page, you're forced into adding pictures of your product, a title of your product, a buy button. Well, what if you ever just want to promote something that's not necessarily a purchase? Like maybe there's a holiday coming up and you want to talk about it. Or maybe there's like something related to your topic. Maybe you're in the animal niche. Maybe you're in the dog niche like pit bulls or something like that. Maybe you want to write an article about pit bull rescue and, and how important it is to rescue dogs or whatever. That's not necessarily a product. That's a cause. But if you write that on your blog, your blog is a way to be able to produce content of things that are, aren't always for sale. Another reason for why a blog is you can feature products on your site in your blog posts. So you can actually write a blog post about products on your site. So it's another form of marketing. Your blog can give you SEO rankings. You can get listed in Google. You can get free traffic from your blog. Your blog can give you articles you can share on your fan page. That way you're sharing your own content instead of other people's content. And you know what? The list goes on and on and on. There's literally so many reasons to use your Shopify blog. There is no reason why not to, okay? The, 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 the downside I could think of is maybe if you don't have time, if you only work in your business an hour a day, probably just stay focused on selling products. But if you have a little bit of time and you love the idea of experimenting with new things, I would recommend getting started with your Shopify blog. So before we dive in and show them examples, why yeah. don't you give some of your feedback? Why are Shopify blogs so important? Um, why have you made such a major focus on them and what do you think they could gain from it? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, And just hearing some of the ideas there, is I'm gonna, I'll give you guys a strategy that'll actually make it easy for you. I'll give you guys a strategy to where you can actually help. I mean, I can't guarantee it's gonna give you rankings or anything like that, but I'll give you a strategy that'll help with the time that it takes for actually blogging because that's probably the biggest pain point that people have on why they don't blog. Mm -hmm. But one thing I'll tell you, I, I did some research and I found out the fifth biggest reason why someone will buy from you, I mean, you have to break down barriers of trust to get people to purchase from you. By not having a blog, it's actually costing trust. Hmm. When you have a blog, it actually creates trust for your, for your store and what you are selling. Uh, the other thing is that you want to have content that uh, gets scroll. You want to have content that people don't bounce off right away. Um, some of the best content you can find is trending topics. So if, you, if you're in the dog niche, maybe you can find some trending topics by going to Google Trends, which is free, and you could take your actual um, your content that is in your store, you could actually find what those uh, the keywords are for that store and then go search them there and then you can have Google send you uh, daily, weekly, monthly uh, trends as mm -hmm. they're happening in that specific niche. And then once you do, then you can go and do a, another thing called content curation. Okay, it's not content 
creation, it's content curation. The biggest thing about content curation is that you have to give the, uh, the author uh, entitlement to it. So you have to have some sort of backlink or some sort of link going back to the original owner of that uh, blog. But you can get the content fast, you can get it for free, and you can just repost it. You can basically copy and paste it right into your blog, right right there with images, everything. And then at the bottom it says author of this blog, of this content curated information with like a, uh, a backlink going back to that uh, that content. You can do that also too with YouTube as well. So you could actually take some YouTube videos and stick, stick them in there as well. And what that'll do is it'll give you what's called like piggybacking. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you might not rank number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, but whatever you do rank when you eventually do rank on that site, uh, it'll it'll rank for some of those same keywords right onto your site. So that's, that's, that's a cool thing you can do. <clears throat> Let's talk about that for a second. Content creation versus content curation. For some of you, that might sound advanced, so let's simplify this. When you're writing a blog post, if you are going to create content, you've got to sit there and you've got to think about a topic to write about. You've got to sit there with your pen and paper, your keyboard and your hands and go, okay, uh, I have a site that's all about nurses. Okay, and you're sitting there, you're like, okay, what should I blog about? Uh, and if you're ever like me, you sometimes get writer's block. Okay, you just, sometimes ideas come to you, sometimes they don't. So you're like, okay, I have a site all about nurses. I'm ready to blog. And you're like, all right. What should I blog about, right? That's content creation. For content creation, sometimes where amazing ideas flow to us and you just can't even stop them, and sometimes you have writer's block. What Carl is presenting is the idea of what's called content curation. Instead of having to think of it all from scratch out of the top of your head, you can just go do a quick little Google search or look at a trending event, find out what other people are talking about, and maybe you just feature like a little snippet, like a paragraph from somebody else's long blog post. And you could say, you know, here's you know, uh, three things about whatever it is. And you can kind of say, on so-and-so's blog, they talk about the importance of this. And here's what they kind of say about it. And then you can link off to their article. And then on another person's blog, they talk about the importance of this. Then another person, they talk about the importance of this. What you're doing is you're just curating content. The content already exists. You're just bringing it all into one post. It's a great way. Like an example would be if I wanted to write a, a post about like five success quotes. Well, I don't need to think of five success quotes. I will just find five people, like, you know, whoever it is. You know, the president of the United States has this to say about it. The CEO of this company has this to say about it. And all I'm doing is I'm giving them credit for the quotes. So now I've got a blog post, which is five quotes, somebody else's content. I've curated it, put it on mine. Carl's saying the important thing is to make sure you give them credit. That way you're not stealing their content. You're not just plagiarizing. You're actually just featuring them and giving them credit. Usually a link back is what they want because they took the time to take the, to create it. So you're just curating it, you're giving them a link back. Content creation versus curation. Creation, writing blog posts, if you're really good and ideas come to you, you should always create your own content. It's always best. Curation is if you don't have a lot of time and the ideas aren't flowing and you just wanna make sure you have content. So is that, yeah, is that a good summary absolutely. of it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's one strategy exactly. I mean, there's there's honestly there's a lot of different strategies you can go into when trying to figure out what do I want to write about. You definitely want to enc encompass whatever you are writing around the subject of what you're selling, mm -hmm. because you're gonna when you do start to when again it's it is about getting free traffic eventually. It's a long term strategy. It's not a short term strategy, but it it does work. And if you do and if you are pushing traffic with uh, paid ads of any sort, Google will actually continue to um, give you more authority. Will get continue to grow your site as well uh, on their in their algorithm as well because they'll see that there's a lot of people coming to that site and sticking on that site or even purchasing on that site. They're, mm -hmm. they're really paying attention to that stuff. They're paying attention to bounce rate. They're paying attention to scroll uh, attention. You know, they're paying attention to attention <laughs> on there. So, you, you know, all that stuff is help, helps. And by having a blog on there, people will have longer attention. They'll stay on their site a lot longer. They'll have scroll rate. They'll have less bounce rates as well as long as it, as long as it is uh, it is, you know, pulling on the keywords that are on the right type of a person. I know that's a little bit advanced. So I'm trying to keep it, trying to keep it, you know, uh, simple as well. But the other thing is content uh, creation, like we were talking about. And there's a lot of different ways you can write it up, write up, you know, write something up. Like you mentioned, the five. Uh, motivational quotes that you've heard before. Um, using numbers is great. I, actually, Chris taught me this a long time ago, was, which was like the seven keys to the seven reasons for this or the three top reasons for that. The other thing that comes to mind is to do a review type of thing. So you do like personal reviews on your products that you sell in your store. So if you're selling, you know, stuff in, in, the, uh, in the military niche, let's say, and you're doing um, 
by combat survival equipment or something like that. You could actually purchase the stuff, make videos for it, and then write something. Actually, you could actually come on to, uh, here's another easy way to do it. You can make a video of it and then go to rev.com and have them transcribe all of it for you, all the content. And then you could just repurpose that content right directly into your Shopify blog. It's, you know, it's. Now, if you guys have ever heard me train, I'm a huge fan of this, what he's talking about, which is products you want to sell on your store. Order them yourself because first of all, quality assurance is great. You're testing out a new vendor. You want to see how it's going to be delivered to your customers. Order it yourself, okay? When you order it yourself, it comes, let's say it's a cell phone case or whatever it might be, then you do a review of it, okay? So you basically look at it. You're like, what's the quality like? Maybe you're like, I don't even want to sell this. This quality is crap, whatever. But let's say you have a cell phone case. You're like, okay, wow. Here I have my cell phone case. And you do a little video review. You're like, okay, I just got my cool cell phone case. As you can see, it's really great material. It's got this design on it. Really nice. I got my iPhone right here and it slips right in, clips right in. It's nice. It holds it. Really good material. You do a little review of it, right? And then you show how it's like magnetic or whatever else it does. And then you show it. So there you go. There's my little review. I make a YouTube video of that. Upload it to YouTube. Like he says, use rev.com. Transcribe it. Now what I do is I embed that YouTube video on my Shopify blog. So I'll say review of such and such phone case. I'll embed it on my um, Shopify blog. Now, I've got it on my Shopify blog. I've got the video embedded. And then underneath that video, I've got a, a long form post. Now I have the transcription, but the transcription might be ugly. When I did the review, I might've been like, uh, blah, 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 blah. And it wasn't really good in the transcription. But I'll take that transcription and I'll organize it. I'll just kind of rewrite the paragraphs. It's very easy. Instead of me writing from scratch, I'm talking and then I'm just rewriting the transcription. So you make it nice and neat and organized. You go, here's my review on such and such product, whatever. In that blog post, you can also link directly to the product. So if you're selling this phone case on your store, you'd write a review on it and of course link directly to it. Now, you post that, that, that whole article, go post it on your fan page. You've already got a fan page for your store. Post it on your fan page, you're delivering content. You can even boost it. Spend like five or ten dollars with a boosted post to drive some traffic back to your site. What's happening is a bunch of things. One is you are you can retarget all your customers who have come to your store. You can run an ad retargeting them back to read your review of this. It's kind of cool. It's like, hey, they were already checking out phone cases on your store. Now they're seeing a review of it. Oh, you know, I'm in the shopping zone. If somebody came to your store, they're probably looking for items like that. So now you can hit them with a retargeted uh, blog post about it, a review. And now watch, you'll likely even get some sales from that. Another thing is SEO. As you start to write articles and boost them on Facebook, Google's gonna see, wow, your store is popular, they'll start ranking your store, okay? And you've got like all of these benefits from it, right? Now, there's also a huge benefit. He said reviews. Not only reviews, but you could also do lists, okay? A list might be, here's the top five gifts. Let's say my store was about nurses, okay? Let's say I, I had products for the profession of nursing then what I might do is I might say, I might write an article that says the top five Christmas gifts to buy for a nurse. You know, top five Christmas ideas to buy for a nurse. Because if, if, if you have a family member who's a nurse, you might go to Google and go like, what's a good nurse gift idea, okay? So I might say top, top 10 Christmas gifts for nurses, top, 10, top five, um, you know, birthday ideas, gifts, um, Thanksgiving, holidays, St. Patrick's Day, um, Valentine's Day, there's all kinds of things for whatever the niche you're in. For the uh, 10 gift ideas for pit bull owners or seven, um, the seven top products for, you know, seven unique products for police officers or whatever niche you're in, right? So the blog allows you that kind of freedom and then all you do is you link to each individual product. So let's say you have seven products, you just feature each one, one at a time. Say number one, the police officer watch. You know, you go this blue watch, it really re resonates, whatever. Number two, the police officer chain. You go, okay, this, this chain, whatever it is, with the police officer, I'm up. number three is the police officer cell phone case. This, this, this sentence is a top seller, blah, blah, blah. You're highlighting your own uh, products. So these review posts are great because people don't feel like they're being sold. Instead, they feel like they're being helped. Right? If I say buy this case, then you're being sold. But if I say, hey, here's a review of this case, you're like, oh, thank you. You're reviewing something, you're helping me. Okay? So, reviews, lists, just content, curation. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a couple of things that just stuck out to me when you were talking about that, too, is that if you guys notice, he was talking about keywords, like the certain, certain type of words. There are different types of words. Some of them are people that are looking for free information. 
those aren't necessarily your buyers. And then there's people that are actually looking to purchase something. So like it was like, a, you know, what's the best thing to buy for nurses? That was a key word there. Like what's the best thing to purchase? What's the best thing to buy for nurses for holidays? So that right there is, those are massively great, like great mm -hmm. key words for buyers versus someone that's looking for like what, you know, how, what's some like free, like how to videos sometimes are going to not necessarily be buyers. They'll create a lot of traffic and you could create a list from it. And you could probably sell them later on when that itch comes. But uh, you want to be able to create buyers right away. So that was one thing that came from that. The other thing was native ads. So if you guys have ever heard of, I'm not sure you know what a, if you guys don't know what a native ad is, but what a native ad is, is basically it's, it's content driven education to, and then goes into a sell. So it's like that serve first, sell second, mm -hmm. which Chris is, is famous for. Serve first, serve value to your customer, and then sell second after they've gotten to know, like, and trust you. So that's what that blog does for you. Uh, and the, the thing is, is when you own it, this is something that all the major blog networks know, like BuzzFeed, um, like uh, Mashable, all of them. When you go to their sites, you can see that they're monetizing their sites. They're usually selling something that's usually connected to um, like ret uh, retargeting, some type of retargeting software. So it's like if you search something somewhere else, they can come there and, and, uh, and basically be retargeted based off of your last search. Well, since you own the blog, you're also in control of how you want to market to the people. So if you have that, that product that is related to that article, well, then you could actually, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You can have links built into them. There's a couple apps out there where you can actually put your products into the, uh, in, you know, like an ad. It look like an ad inside of a, a native article itself. And you can also make a tab, one of your trip wires. So you could have like free watch right in there. And they're like, as soon as I read there, they're like, what's that free watch? I want to see what that is. Uh, and th that word free will pop out on a lot of people. So you can actually split test that. You can do some different ways that you can actually do it. And then also too, you were talking about like taking the vi take viral content like on Facebook and, and it's, it's that native viral content. So you're gonna be able to go after, and this is an ad, this is a little bit different than SEO, but you'll be able to, it, once you have an article, you can go after that target that that article is gonna resonate the best to. Mm -hmm. And then you can drive traffic there and then you can retarget them. Uh, with an actual purchase later on, or if they don't buy from there, you know, you can like like a, this this concept of native advertising. We'll probably even do a whole day on this because it's such a fascinating topic. An example, a perfect example might be that I have a product that's actually good for like five different niches, okay, or five different types of people. Maybe an example might be that I have a um, necklace that would be good for men or for women. Okay, so already there's two different vertical markets for men or for women, but we can go even further and say, okay, I have a, I have a product that would actually be great for like, you might identify these five different groups of people, five different audiences that might be good for this product. Well, you've got the one products page on your Shopify store, but you can use the blog to write a custom article about how it's good for this audience, a custom article, how it's good for this audience, a custom article, how it's good for that audience. You can actually use your blog as a tool to be able to do that, right? So not only can you say, hey, he these products are good for the holidays, these products are good for this group of people, these products, you can actually do it with age too. So if you really wanna convert sales, you might go, okay, wow, this product, um, what if I targeted people over 50 years old and then I wrote a blog post about an, a, you know, a, a, a couple, a married couple in their 60s or whatever that is using this product and absolutely loves it. Now what I've done is I've targeted that audience. This kind of advertising, what I call bridge marketing, is phenomenal. It's like such a great way to be able to market your products. Now you have an unlimited audience. You could you could sell the same cell phone case, but just you can you can use um, your blog to be able to sell it in different ways that are unbelievable. Use the blog to be able to bridge to new audiences. Okay, so great techniques, great ideas, native advertising, you name it. What I want to do now is I want to jump into why don't we go to Google? Why don't I show you how to find what other people are doing with their Shopify blog so you can model after it. Let's spend about 10 minutes and then let's wrap it up. I gotta go back on stage. But let's do that. Let's just go ahead and jump on over to the blog and let's, uh, let's, let's see what we can make happen. Okay, so here we are on Google. Okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, move this a little closer. So when you're on Google, and what I'll do is I'll pull up some search results and then I will go ahead and ask Carl for some of his feedback. So everybody follow along here. Go to Google, and I want you to do a site search. Remember the whole site search that I did for My Shopify? You go search site colon myshopify.com. You guys have seen me do this 100 times, right? 
16 million results. Well, here's what I want you to do, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to do site colon myshopify.com slash, I think it's blogs. Let me see if it's blog or blogs. Yeah, slash blogs. Okay, there is your new search. Site colon myshopify.com forward slash blogs. That is your new search for today. It's the same search as my Shopify, but it's myshopify.com slash blogs. What this does, it brings up 919,000 blog posts, okay? So there's all kinds of blogs, right? We'll just start going down the list and we'll look at them. Here we have Terra Trellis, a Shopify store, and it has their blog. And you can kind of see what, what it is they're doing. Sunsets in Sonoma, how to grow your own stuff. So see, they have their own store, but yet they're blogging. Look, the magnificent benefits of vertical gardens. And you can see that they're just blogging. There's their post. And you can see that they're just creating content for their audience. You know, and they're showing this, these beautiful gardens, right? And the environmental benefits. And you can see that they're doing that. You know, above, um, you know, and right here, look at this. They have a link. Let's see where this link goes. Look at that. Their link goes to a product they're selling for $989. So look, the first listing that showed up for me is an example of how somebody is writing a very rich content post. Look at this is a value post. The magnificent benefits of vertical gardens. And you see they're showing pictures of vertical gardens, featuring them, featuring them all over. And then look, look what they did. They've got they've got products listed in them above. This purple high hyacinth bean proves a gorgeous choice for this weathered steel trellis. And so you click right there. And look, it's going to sell a, tre a trellis. It's going to, sh it's selling this. So they have figured out, instead of just selling this product to these um, people who are interested in this, why not write blog posts and show example ones? And that's it. Like that's how simple this is. They got a link here to one. You know, they got a link here to one. You know, they got a link here to one. And they got these different styles. Here's another. Here's yet another one. So what they're doing is they're selling their products. These trellises, they're selling them by using the blog. Now, how do we find this? Let's go back. All we did is we went site colon myshopify.com forward slash blogs. Okay? Look at all these blogs. You guys can go in and look at all of them. I don't, I'm not saying that some of these are better than others, but you can at least go in and, and start looking at them. So here's a site called Bubblecam, and they basically use their blog to talk about their company. Bubblecam welcomes a new CEO. Now, this, this has to do with the know you, like you, trust you factor that Carl was talking about. Carl says that people need to learn to trust you. Well, your blog can help develop that trust, and that's exactly what Bubble is doing. Bubble is saying, look at us. We're a large company. We have a new CEO. We have technology. We have all this stuff that we're a part of. This really kind of gives you belief like, wow, this is, a, this is a legit company. They're doing big things, okay? So let's keep going, okay? Let's kind of go belly buds here. Let's see what these people are doing, okay? Now everywhere feels like home. Introducing the belly buds, da 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 That's just their site. And let's see what they're doing here. Map news. Read our, read our raw chocolate blogs, recipes, and much more. So here's this site here that's selling chocolate products. Look at this. Ten things you didn't know about chocolate. <laughs> Carl, you were just talking about these list posts as being yeah. a great thing to write. Is this an example? Yeah, this is a good example. And especially with recipes, I think, is, is something that people do a lot of searching for. Again, that SEO factor. But... People like to have recipes that gives them something to follow. And then think about how long someone's going to actually stick on this page and read through this, especially like a chocolate lover. Now they're going to learn about where chocolate comes from and the cacao plant. Uh, you know, Probably their particular product might be a specialty chocolate or something like that. I'm not really sure what they're selling yet, but I'm imagining that's what it is. And then there's that call to action. And that's one, that's one thing I want to mention to you guys too is that you want to make sure – that wasn't a call to action, but you want to make sure that you have call to actions inside of your it's, blog. It's a pretty good call to action. It, it is a it's yeah. it's an indirect right yeah 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 because they're 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 selling now they're, we're through a funnel where they're going to sell us on this raw chocolate gotcha yeah so it's a, it's it's going to a sales letter there's mm -hmm. a long form sales letter right here um, and then they're going to sell you the chocolate so also too um, if are any of these images are you seeing if any of these and there's the chocolate there's the beautiful chocolate right there so they're they're essentially they took the blog post and said here's ten things you didn't know about chocolate and they said here's then they sent us to a sales letter that said here's the benefits of raw chocolate and now. They're pre -sold, they pre-sold us. Yep. Now we got to try this. And look, it's only $1.99 or whatever. I mean, not, not American dollars. But yep. now you're sitting there going, I got to do this. That's a pretty effective little funnel. Yeah. We just, and we're just randomly found this in Google. It's not like, yeah. did you ever see this page before? Never. Neither did I. Yeah, and, and so I also, too, want to mention to you guys, like, I think there's a couple of things that they could do better on this site. Like, they could have a video. 
like right at the very beginning of it, there should be a video there talking about the benefits of dark chocolate or whatever the case may be. Um, also, you could go to Canva, I think it's Canva, right, that you can do free mm -hmm. images. You could actually make your own banner uh, with an image and then have a backlink on that image. You could actually put like buy now buttons on there too that you could actually, you could pepper inside of any of these article posts. Look, look what they've done here. Check this out. Our latest recipe from Bettina's Kitchen brings a little something different this month. Now watch what they've just done here. Look, they've got a picture of their product in with this. How cool is that? <laughs> Indirect. Indirect. So look, uh, lentils and sh soft shell tacos. What does this have to do with chocolate? Really, you wouldn't think anything. But watch this. Look at one of the ingredients, a half a bar of on bar, 90% raw. Linkable. And where does that go? That goes right in to this product. I mean, check out how cool that is. They go, look at this person. They're saying, we have a food product, so let's use our blog to share recipes and let's include this chocolate as part of it. What a great idea. Like, you see what they're doing here? So they're basically, look, even in this, they're saying just throw a little chocolate on the top of this, on the top of this recipe, and that's what you need. So they're making it work, and this is how you guys want to think. You guys want to think creative from this. Um, you want to think creative. I got someone texting me saying they can't see this. Um, Somebody's saying that they cannot see this. So let us try again. Okay. They weren't seeing it. They weren't seeing it? It didn't look like it on that. Okay, real quick, I got a text saying you guys couldn't see that. Okay, let me check the comments real quick. You guys are saying you couldn't see that. We're going to start. We're going to just do that little part over for those of you that couldn't see that. So right here you have... In the Google search, you have site colon myshopify.com slash blogs, okay? And what we did was we were showing, basically, we were going through these blogs right here. Here is the Terra Trellis blog that we had just talked about. And we were basically saying, like, they have articles like this, like Grow Your Own, Welcome the Edible Garden, The Magnificent Benefits of Vertical Gardens. And we were showing blog posts here. I guess some of you had trouble seeing this. And we are showing how they basically do this and they basically link to all of their own um, articles. I'm not sure why it got stuck on Google in the live stream. I apologize for that. But you can see here what they do is they sell their own trellises by writing an article. Okay. Then on top of that, we went down and we started looking at more. We went to this. All we do is go to site colon myshopify.com slash blogs. And look at this. Read our raw chocolate blogs. 10 things you didn't know about chocolate as an example. And, you know, they give you all this history about chocolate. And then after all this history, they give you all this value. It says, for more information of the benefit of raw chocolates, click here. And now they got a sales letter selling you on raw chocolate, all to sell their superfood chocolate bar. And this chocolate bar, they're really doing a great job with branding. They're selling their bar and stuff like this. And as we started looking through their blog, they had lots of examples. This was another great example. Um, let's see, right here. They these have a all, recipe. These are all template based too. So like every template's going to have a different style, the stylistically how the blog is actually going to be set up. So I just want to point that out when you're looking at this. You're, you're, it's based off that template. Yeah, exactly. So your store is going to have a blog and you're going to be able to get, be able to show it a little, look a little bit different than this. All, every store looks a little bit different. So your blog may not look exactly like this. You might find one you like on a certain theme. but You can tag there's tags right here. There's the latest recent articles, stuff like that. You can search the blog. But this, this one was a really cool one. This is a recipe for soft shell tacos. But what, this, what they did was they included in the ingredients a half a bar of this raw chocolate. Okay, and they got a little, it shows you an example. So a half a bar of this raw chocolate. So make this with a half a bar of the raw chocolate. Just as your mixture is combining, add half 90% on bar and mix it until it's melted. And it adds a little chocolate. Right? And then what they do is they link right into the product for you to be able to buy it. So what they're saying is they have a food product and what they're doing is they are, um, they are showing how since they have a food product, why not write a bunch of recipes that include that food? It's a great example. So in a nutshell, what we're teaching you to do is we're teaching you to go to Google and do a, search, a site search for site colon myshopify.com slash blogs and start going through here and looking for ideas. Okay, so you can kind of just go into each one. You know, here's a bunch of random ones. You can go in and you can kind of start seeing what they're doing. Are they, um, are they creating bridges to their products? Are they creating, um, you know, maybe what they're doing is they're creating like a backdrop to their story. You know, the humble beginnings in, in his grandmother's kitchen. 
Um, Fraser Doherty's jam business has taken over the world. So this person here is using credi credibility and they're kind of linking back into their super jam and everything they're doing. So it's pretty cool like how, how you watch this all come about, okay? So all you do is you go to Google and do a site search. Now, let me show you one more thing, okay? Site colon myshopify.com slash blogs. Now what you can do is you can add more words. So let's add the word review, okay? Now, not only are you searching everybody's Shopify blogs, you're also searching people that are doing re reviews, you know? Former law enforcement officer reviews S1 pepper spray gun. Let's just click on some of these and see if they're any good. So here's somebody's Shopify store. You know, free shipping, there's their logo, there's their, their stuff. Former law enforcement officer reviews S1 pepper spray gun. And look at this blog post. We wanted to start out um, sharing this and that. Uh, to see this five-star review on the Amazon site, click here. And there's, there's the article. They're getting me to opt in here. And they're giving all this information about it. Look at all this content. If they can get a visitor to come read all of this, how valuable. The visitor's now staying on this site for a while. Now, they're, now that they're here on the site, they're going to start learning a lot more about it. So you kind of can start to see what people are, are writing. Christmas ad review. Um, you know, uh, this review, Steinberg Retrolog review. Um, I don't even know what this is. Let's, let's go look at it. Synth Morph, maybe it's a music uh, keyboard type review. Yeah, so what they're doing is they're reviewing this product. Um, and you can review like any kind of product. You can just type in the word reviews and look. Prissy Lady Body Wave Review. Um, let's see. Wolfgang Tillman's review, this and that. Okay, let's, let's like even go into something more specific. Watch this. Let's go into a niche. Pitbull. Shop, MyShopify.com slash blog space Pitbull. And let's look, let's just start going through these and look at these. You guys can do this on your own time here. The five biggest myths about pit bulls. So see, this is their site, Tee Their Tug, and they have their store. See, so they, they have this store, and just like you do, their own Shopify store, and they're selling all this stuff here. These tugs um, and these toys. So they're selling tugs, toys, um, all kinds of stuff. But they're using their blog for credibility, but also, look at this. The five biggest myths about pit bulls, so you can design this in Canva and just put your logo. We teach this stuff all the time. And look what they're doing. They're basically showing this whole entire, uh, they're dispelling some of the myths to be able to, um, you know, they can use this as advertising content. You know, the five biggest myths about pit bulls debunked. You know, so they're using the blog as an example to be able to drive traffic there. You know, justice for bullies. It's controversial too. Controversial. Yeah, so they're basically... The history of so the history of your products, the history of your niche, you know, information about your niche. Now look, also they have pop-ups right here. Like you can come in and you can, um, you know, you can basically participate in giveaways. They have all kinds of uh, pop-ups, just different stuff you can do. Um, history about your product, unknown facts, news, all kinds of stuff. So you can do this for any any niche you want. You're in the nursing niche, you can do it in the nurse, nursing niche, baby nursing right there, right? Um, you could do it in the fireman niche. No matter what niche you're in, you know, you can basically do how-to articles teaching how to use your products. Um, you know, you can basically find like funny quotes and everything. You can do all kinds of stuff, you know. Now watch this, like top 10 gift ideas, okay? Top 10 gifts for the sriracha addict in your life. And this is a site that sells sriracha products, sriracha to go, keep it spicy. Look at this, top 10 gifts for a sriracha fanatic. Okay, and what are they gonna say? They're gonna say the top 10 gift. The first one is this keychain bundle. It's a keychain with a little sriracha on it. I and look one. at this. You have one with yeah. sriracha? I'm a sriracha fanatic. Oh, are you? Yeah. You actually are? <laughs> yeah. And I just found this. You're like, um, I, 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 I'm that. shopping here all the time. <laughs> then they go sriracha cookbooks. So see, this, this person's in the sriracha niche and clearly uh, Carl, it got Carl's attention. So look, they've got keychains, they've got packets, they've got bundles. So what they're doing is they're basically writing articles showcasing their products. Sriracha beef jerky, all kinds of stuff, right? Okay, so it's basically, you know, sake season, top, top 10 sake gifts. So you find people that like sake. See how this is niche specific for the true sake blog? America's first sake store, okay? So they have like all these gifts, you know? And I bet you can go on AliExpress and search the word sake and I'll bet you there's a lot of Stuff for sake lo uh, lovers. Valentine's Day gifts. If you have a general store, just find some gifts for Valentine's Day. Look, top nine unique and in inexpensive gift ideas for Valentine's Day. Heart rings. See, dangle earrings. See, you could be writing heart necklaces. You could be writing articles like this, 
right? Click here for more ideas. And look, it brings you right into the necklaces collection. You can link right into a collection of stuff that you sell. And next thing you know, you've got somebody buying this. Yeah, and they did a little bit different of a thing. They, they actually went to the collection instead of just the purchase page, which is actually pretty – that's another really good way to use this with your ads. You can pepper the ad with specific um, products or collections, which is, which is really cool how they did that. Absolutely. So you guys can see they give you ideas here. Click here for more ideas. And they link you right into a collection. This one's going to go right to a collection of watches. Great watch ideas. So they're basically, and they're also getting link popularity from their blog back to these categories. So they're getting more clicks. Yep, they're getting more clicks. So look at this. I'll, all I do is typed in site colon myshopify.com slash blogs slash top 10 gift ideas. You know, here's the best gift, get, gift giving guide for the girl you've just started, what, dating? Yep, girl you just started dating. Curiosity. Yep. On the headline. And look at this, they're giving, they're giving you a, a, gift, a gift buying guide. And they might have curated this content as well, you know? So they're giving you, and then they're selling a book. Okay, so you can go in here and you can start learning and see what other people are doing. Bar mitzvah gifts or bat mitzvah gifts. 10 gifts to steal her heart this Valentine's Day. Top 10 holiday gift ideas. Five unique birthday gift ideas for her 21st birthday. For your long distance girlfriend relationship. Whatever it is, okay? So there's just tons of stuff. So you can go in and type in your niche, your niche. So like whatever your niche is, and really you can get, you can like, like your, your niche might be something, like you might be selling turtle related products. Well, you can see what people are blogging about, about turtles, you know? Maybe they're giving, maybe you're selling turtle jewelry, but you're, you know, you're finding out like you're selling like facts and information about turtles to try to drive people in that are turtle lovers. Think about it. How do you reach your passionate audience? One of the ways is through a blog. So here's, here's a store. You know, you know it's a store, free shipping, shopping cart, because it's on my Shopify, and look what they're doing. They're really utilizing this blog here, but look at this. Give 25% with every purchase. A beautiful little ad here. Look, they got a video that's embedded. They're teaching you about turtles. Why? Because they're bringing in people that are passionate about turtles. And what does this say? Did you know that sea turtles are endangered? Honored one of these peaceful ocean dwellers today with a handcrafted turtle ring, and we will give up to 25% to conservation. Look what they're doing. They're utilizing... Um, they're utilizing their blog post to teach you about turtles, and then they're linking right into a turtle rings right here. See that? See how powerful that is? And it's not just turtles. This is sea life. They're selling, and this is all stuff you could get on AliExpress. It's not just turtles. They got starfishes, dolphins, octopuses. So you can go and you can see some of these people are utilizing their blog. Ocean pollution, help save the ocean. Why ocean is, see what they're doing? They're basically going, what are people passionate about that are in their niche? And they're blogging about it and they're basically going in here and writing all about it. So this is a great thing for you to begin to reverse engineer. Okay? It, it's so let's get some final thoughts here. Yeah, that's actually this last one is uh, just a great example of how to use it um, because they're, they're actually utilizing more aspects of their blog. Like, like the one that we showed earlier had a video to start with. And it's been proven that uh, – there you go. There's a video. So video, images, mm -hmm. people stay longer on your site with images. Uh, with with videos, they stay longer on your site because they're going to get engaged with that passion that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then you're going to have these other call to actions that are literally everywhere. There's call to actions to the right. You don't even bottom. need a call to action in the blog because the blog is on your store. So yeah. just by somebody arriving here, they're seeing everything all around it. They're seeing this. They're seeing all these ocean gifts. So there's a call to action everywhere. You don't even have to put one in the blog post because, look, they're everywhere. As soon as you go down here, shop by animal. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, this is, a, this is one of the best examples we've shown. Yeah, we're just finding this randomly, you guys. Look at how easy this is to find. We're just going to Google. So what I want to do is let's wrap up with some final thoughts here, okay? Let's wrap up, Carl, with some final thoughts as to why um, people should jump on with their own blog, okay? So real quick, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Um, two minutes. What are your final thoughts? If somebody's brand new... How easy is it for them to get started with their blog? What do they do? And, you know, obviously I think we made a case for why. So how can somebody get started to take action from this? Absolutely. So whatever you're selling, it's, there's, you're either in a passionate niche or you're in a general store and you're trying to figure out where those passions might come from based off targeting and stuff like that. But what you would do, just, just like we were showing, you just do some Google searches. I mean, Google is the most powerful search engine on earth. 
and do some Google searches for some content ideas or some content curation. Like we didn't really see a lot of content curation on a lot of those. But if you're if you're not if you're not really thinking about it, you don't really have the time to write it out. Go there and find the content. Uh, the other thing is like we talked about is maybe do a review video. Earlier we were talking about doing review videos. Review videos work. They're great. They even work great as ads by themselves if you wanted to push ads onto Facebook. And then do uh, after after that then actually do some uh, pushing t uh, targeted traffic to your articles themselves. So once you have an article there and you find and you know what your uh, target audience is, push them there and then retarget them later with another product or a product that's that's related to it. Absolutely. When people visit your site, retarget them with articles, retarget them with blog posts. So when you advertise your blog posts, share them on your Facebook fan page and boost the post and choose the audience of people that have already visited your site. These are called retargeting ads. So write a blog post, post it to your fan page and boost it and show it to people who have already visited your site, to your retargeting audience. It is a great way to be able to get people to know you, like you, and trust you. A great way to boost up sales, SEO, and everything else. So thanks for your time, Carl. Yeah. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed Carl, sorry for the five or so minutes that there was a hiccup. But if you guys enjoyed Carl, let him know in the comments. I'll make sure Carl gets a chance to read them. But I've got to go jump on stage at our event here. It's been a pleasure hanging with you guys. We'll see you guys next 90 Day Challenge episode. Peace.